Hello everyone. So uh, welcome to this lecture on the course data communication. In the previous uh, lecture, we started with uh, discussion in on module two. In module two, we are going to discuss of three very important techniques in physical layer. That is digital to digital conversion or what is known as a line coding, which we have uh, discussed in our previous video. Then we have uh, the second method that we need to understand is analog to digital conversion. And finally, the third topic will be uh, digital to analog conversion. Fine. So this is our second lecture. So in this lecture too, uh, we are going to discuss on analog to digital conversion technique. Digital conversion. And we are going to focus on technique called as pulse code modulation. Right? This is known as PCM, right? So this is what is this uh, this uh, lectures uh, syllabus with pulse code modulation. And in pulse code modulation, uh, there are three steps. The first step is sampling and the next step is quantization. And the third step in this is coding. What actually it means is, so we'll start with an analog signal. Some signal we have with, this is my reference. And we are going to start with taking not only a few samples. Okay, so we'll take some samples on this waveform. And these sampled waveforms will then be approximate to, uh, uh, to some integer voltages, values, right? So these voltages are then converted to, so that's, that's what you call quantization. So we have uh, some values like 1.12 volts. So we might like to bring it somewhere like one volt or 1.5 or two volts. And then if it is a one volt, uh, we will map it to some integer number like uh, something like one that will be you no know, given some binary value okay like we can use three bits or four bits so that is this is what is the overall uh, in a simple uh, terms uh, we can say about the pulse code modulation so we are going to discuss three steps the first step will be the sampling, right? In this step, we are given with an analog signal. So we have an analog signal. Okay. And we are going to sample that at some regular interval. It means for some specific time interval, I'm going to sample it. So we are going to collect a few of the voltage values. So at this interval, I'll take this as my first sample, then here, then here, and then here. Okay, so what we are doing here is at some regular interval, let's call this interval as sampling interval, TS. And the inverse of this TS, we can call it as sampling frequency. So we are going to collect the samples, okay, 
at some regular interval of time. So this is what we call it as sampling. So these are the voltages. So if my input signal, if it is varying from minus, sorry, plus 10 volts to minus 10 volts, so this is the maximum variation that I can see. Then we are going to map this, like this is one voltage I'm going to get somewhere, something like 9.9 .9 volts, or this could be something like five volts. Here I'm getting some three volts. So a continuous signal, like I'm having an XRP. Now I'm going to take the discrete values. So I may get like five volts first, then a 9.9 .9 volt, then, discrete number three and so on, right? So this is what the sampling is. And there are three ways that we are going to do the sampling. The one is first one is called as an ideal sample. Ideal sampling. So what we discussed just now is an ideal sampling. Taking at the uh, one impulse, okay, this is an impulse at time t1 and another impulse at time t2. So this, this kind of phenomena is uh, theoretically correct, but practically we don't get it. The second uh, method is called as natural. Okay, so let's see that how it looks. So I'm taking again the same analog signal. Right, And in order to sample these waveforms, we are going to use a special circuit which is called sample at code. It is like switch. It is a switch basically and the switch is going to stay in the on state for some specific pulse width or some specific time duration. So if I, if I use that circuit, a simple switch, so I, I, will, I will use a train of impulses to receive these signals. So I'm going to sample and hold and then come down. Right? Okay, so excuse me for this uh, 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 not uh, so accurate diagrams, okay? So we are going to uh, use this uh, sampling, you know, using a sample and hold circuit. And uh, the peak of these pulses will follow the peak of the input signal, right? So the third kind of sampling is called flat top sampling. Right? So in this case, if I want to draw this waveform, again, let us take an analog signal. And in this case, what happens is, we are going to not make, uh, no, follow the input signal, but the top of this pulse will be a, will be a flat. Right? Hope you are getting my, the idea here. Fine. So three methods of sampling uh, are possible and uh, ideal sampling is theoretical. So we are going to uh, either go with the natural sampling or, or slap a flat top sampling. And uh, the circuit that is used to do this is called as Sample hold circuit. Right? Now, there is some condition for this, which is called as a Nyquist rate. Okay, the question is how many samples, minimum number of samples are required 
so that we can represent our input signal, right? So we have now the uh, train of pulses and how many pulses are required to represent each of these uh, signals, right? So let us take the example. Okay, so I'm taking an analog signal. And let us take two samples. One sample I'll take here and another I will take it here. So I'm taking two samples. Now, how do we re reconstruct this sampled waveform? Okay, to the original signal. So that is done by passing through a simple low pass filter. Right? So if I pass these signals through a low pass filter, how I am going to reconstruct? So I'll, I'll get straight lines like this. Right? So you can see that instead of a smooth sine wave, I'm going to get a triangular waveform. Now let us take more number of signals. I'll take one sample here along with this, one more here, one more sample here, one more here, and one more here. Now I'm taking one, two, three, four, five, six. Now let us see how we are going to reconstruct. So I'm joining these dots. Now you can see that if I use two samples, the error in the reconstruction is high. So by increasing more number of samples, we can achieve more close approximation with the original signal, right? So two samples we started. Now if I take just only one sample, not two samples, we will take only one sample. So let us assume that I'm only taking the sample here, right? So if I pass it with the uh, low pass filter, I'm not able to recover the original signal. It is not possible to recover. This is called the aliasing effect in the frequency. Now, what is the Nyquist theorem? It says, in order to recover the original signal, your sampling frequency should be at least, should be greater than or equal to, okay, two times of your signal frequency. Okay, so that's what we call as a sampling theorem. Then the frequency of sampling should be greater than or equal to the value of T. Now, this is true if I'm using a uh, a narrow band signal that is, uh, which is ranging from, uh, uh, sorry, not a narrow band signal. If it is true, if I'm using uh, uh, what is called as a base band signal, so which is having a range of frequencies from zero to cutoff frequencies. Now, if I am using a, a broad band signal, it means my signal is shifted to a bandwidth between F1 and F2, then this F will be replaced with the maximum frequency in the of the band. So what is the maximum frequency that is there? We have to take the twice of it. Clear? So for example, in a telephone line, the frequency range that it can transmit is from zero to, uh, sorry, from uh, somewhere around 20 hertz to 4,000 uh, hertz, right? That is where we can hear the voice. So that is the range, F2 is, the maximum frequency there is F2, which is 4,000 hertz. So we have to sample it twice. Up. So we'll be using 8,000 uh, samples uh, uh, in order, I mean, the sampling frequency will be uh, 8,000, right? Now, after we achieve these samples, we go through the two important procedures, that the last two procedures, one is called the quantization, which is an approximation. We are going to 
approximate them to some uh, known fixed uh, 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 discrete values. And then we will uh, encode it to a binary. So let us see that procedure, how it works. So we will use an example and then we will uh, discuss. On that. So we are talking about the quantization process. Okay, so we, we will take a simple example. So this is my zero line. Right? And uh, let us assume some, some analog signal. Okay. So here we are having one analog signal. And this analog signal is sampled, right? So we are having one sample here. So more than uh, uh, twice of the frequency, I'm going to sample. So what here? One sample here. is here, nine, here, here, okay. So we have now sampled. Now let us assume that my analog signal is varying from plus 20 volts, so maximum voltage it can take is plus 20 volts. This is, and uh, 0, 1, 4, 0, 5, 4, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so let's take this threshold here. I'll take it as plus 20 volts, and 4, 5, 15, 10, 15, 20, and it varies from minus 20 volts to plus 20 volts. Now, uh, just with some guess, let us write it here. This is five volts, 10 volts, 15 volts. Again, this is five volts, 10 volts, 15 volts, right? So here, this voltage might be, let us assume it is 7.5 volts. And this voltage is somewhere around 14.8 volts, just at some uh, uh, value I am mentioning, okay? So here it might be somewhere like 19.8 volts. This would be 19.5 volts. This could be somewhere around eight. This will take it as minus eight and this as minus minus 14.6 let's call this as 13 minus 13 this as minus 8 right so my discrete values of the continuous i'm only now having these voltages 7.5 and 14.8 19.8 so let us first write those values so my samples, okay, so voltages what I'm having is 7.5, 14.8, 19.8, 19.5, minus 14.6, minus 13, and minus 8. Now, what, I, what we are going to do is, we are going to use what is called as the normalizer. So let us assume that I am changing my voltages between these two values. D is my distance between two 
approximations. So we are reading 4D. So I can go up to 5 voltage. So this again, minus D is 2D, minus 3D, and minus 4D. So I'm going to range from 0 to uh, uh, 5 volts. The maximum 5 volts I'm going to approximate. So if I normalize it, so let us first take the normalized values. Okay, so we will compute the normalized values. Uh, I'll open my calculator. So 7.5 divided by 5. 5 is the maximum I'm taking. So I get this normalized values as 14.1.5. 14.8 divided by 5. So I'll get this as 2.96. Hope you are getting. I'm normalizing it with my maximum voltage. 3.96. 10 10.5 divided by 5. By 5. 1.6. This is minus 1.6. 2.6 divided by 5. 2.92. Minus 13 divided by 5, minus 2.01, and again minus 8, 1.6. This is 1.6. So we are normalizing these voltages. Now, after normalizing, what we will do is we will take the midpoint of this and we will bring this normalized value close to it. So it means we are going to cal calculate what is called as the step size, which is delta. So it's called as a step size, which is V max minus V minimum by the number of levels, right? So here, the number of levels we are taking are eight. So eight levels are what we are taking, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this is one level, second level, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are taking eight levels of this case. So V max minus V minimum divided by the eight. So that is the step size. So we are going to uh, bring it, this voltage somewhere close to this. Like in this case, this 1.5. So this is the mid value, right? So this I'm going to take as it is. Here it comes 2.96. So 2.96, I will take it close to this. This is there in this voltage. So 2.96 here, right? So I'll be having this as 2.5. 3.96 as 3.5. I'm taking the mid value between these two. So wherever this sample voltage will be there, I'm going to take the mid value. Okay, middle value. So 3.9, 3.5. So 1.5 is there, 1.5 minus 1.5, minus 2.5, minus 2.5, and minus 1.5. See, what we are doing now, we are approximating it to some voltage, right? Now, these voltages are mapped with the integers. So this level, I'll call it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? So 1.5 comes here, right? For this value, I'm talking. So the value, the integer value that we are going to map is 5. So before that, so after normalizing, okay, after normalizing, I am approximating. So this step is called approximation. And if you can compute the error here, see that approximation is introducing some error. So this error is zero, right? So this is uh, 0 0.46. This I'm getting it as, again, uh, 0 0.46, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.42, minus 0 0.51 and minus uh, 0 
right? So we are going to get some amount of error in the signal also. So yeah, minus uh, this, this should be, I think you'll get this as plus, right? So we are going to get some amount of error, which is called as a quantization. Now, this voltage is mapped like I'm having 1.5, right? So this is that voltage. Let me take a different color. So 1.5 voltage is here, which is mapped to 5. So my integer value is 5. This 2.5, it comes here. This is 6. 3.5 is here. So I'm having 7, 7, 1.5 plus 1.5 is 5, minus 1.5. Here it is 2, then we have minus 2.5 here it will come. So it is 1, 1, and again 2. Now we are mapped to the integer numbers. Now what is the code for this? So we need to convert that, map this to a code. Since I'm using eight levels, we know that uh, relationship we discussed in the first module. It is uh, log 2 of L. So in this case, L is 8. So it's, its value of uh, log 2 is 3. So I'm going to use 3 bits to represent it. So for 5, it is 101. 6 is 110, 111, 111, 111, 2 is 010, 001, 001, 001, and 010. So we have converted our analog signal to get a series of zeros and ones, right? So the bit rate, what we have to observe is the number of bits in one second, we can now relate it with the sampling frequency and the number of bits that we have used. And whereas the SNR value, that is the error that has introduced some noise, so we call it as now uh, measurement, which is SNR. Uh, this is given as 6.02 NB into, well, sorry, NB plus 1.76. So this is the SNR, uh, the noise, the level of noise that is introduced because of the uh, quantization. And the bandwidth of the digital signal, okay. What is the bandwidth of the digital signal? So we can see that it is uh, NB times the bandwidth of the analog signal. Okay. So these are the few uh, expressions uh, that we need to remember. Okay. I hope that uh, you understand this, uh, the procedure. So this, so we will stop it here. And uh, uh, we will continue about, uh, before going to a digital to analog conversion, uh, we will discuss what is known as a serial uh, uh, or simple in transmission modes. No? We'll understand the difference between uh, the serial and the parallel transmission. And then we will go with the uh, digital to analog conversion. Okay, thank you very much.